I think we're live. Oh, I got a thumbs up. Great. Comments? <laughs> Trying to see if I can see comments. Okay, I'm gonna say hi. And Isaac says, hi, how you doing? So should we wait a little bit before we um, We're going to review samsara, where is it? We're gonna unbox it and review it. Now, I have received some uh, comments that there was like the internet was lagging. At the moment, that's what the internet is. It's slow here in the bunker. This is not a fake wall, this is real cement, guys. And it's really hard for me to get a provider to um, ensure quick, so you see, when you when you do something, when you stream something, uh, you know, you, when you download stuff, that's a different type. You're using different speeds and different internet as per contract than you would use when you uh, upload. And I'm uploading right now because I'm live streaming, and that's a different issue. And there are complications with it as far as this particular space is concerned. So I do apologize. Bear with me. Um, I hope that for now the image is okay. What do you guys say? Is the image okay? Hi, Radha J. Um, hi, Melly. How you go? How you going? How you doing? <laughs> hey, Johnny. How's it going? Um, okay, Melinda says I'm okay. Her end. I'm going to try to move, not too quickly because that's also a problem. You know, because the more you move, and the more kind of pixelated it all gets. M O M of uh, three roses. Hello, Jacob. Hi. How you doing, sweetie? Thumb up the video, guys. Thumbs it ups. <laughs> so before we get into samsara, just wanted to remind you, I will make a video specifically for the topic, but I will be giving a lecture uh, in Germany, Berlin, mid-November, uh, Saturday and Sunday, I think 17, 18 of November. There are very limited places. It's a lecture on social media, film and video editing. Because you know I, I do edit film and video. And as you know, I am busy with social media quite a bit. So there's a very limited amount of spaces available. But you're warned over two months ahead of time. And I'm thinking we could also make a meet and greet afterwards. So it's two day, it's an intense course, it's eight hours a day. It's, it's, a, it's a, the real deal, honey. So if you want to join it, um, I will make a particular specific video with all the details, where to apply, how to apply, and also how to get a uh, percentage off if you apply in pairs. That's also something to mention. But um, Melinda's going good. Mariana N. Aroth says, hello. Hi, sweetie. How are you doing? Yeah, Johnny says it's blurry. Ah, hey, Emilio. Ladies and their best gay friends. <laughs> Uh, Melinda says, Emilio, you made it. Emilio has made it. Um, Skittles, 132012 says, hi, Jacob. Hi, Skittles. Uh, oh, my God. I used to own that scent years ago. Colin says, hello, all. Perfect. All right. So, uh, as I said, internet is not so fast, so I do apologize for the graininess Let's just hope that the sound is good, at least. You know what I mean? So you could you, you could just listen if you don't want to see the pixel mess that it, that is the fashion bunker today. So I'm dressed with this. This is back in the day when I did buy H&M collaborations, Versace for H&M. I wouldn't do it anymore. Looking forward to what Moschino has to show, but, you know, whatever. Uh, and this is... Believe it or not, Rita Ora Kimono for uh, Adidas. Oh, now I moved. Now we're going to have issues. Sound-wise, my air conditioning is on because I am dying from heat. So I thought to have this little bit of an Asian inspiration going on while we do samsara. Oh, hey, Debbie. Debbie's in the house. Uh, sound is perfect, says Johnny. Perfect. Don't forget to thumbs up the video, guys. Oh, for your lovely host. Thank you so much, Amarim. Yeah, love love up the video <laughs> thumb up the video and love it up um all right so art souls hey art souls how you doing um i made it youtube didn't notify me 
YouTube, yeah, sometimes they, they don't notify. I don't know what the what the shtick is. But uh, okay, guys, so this is Samsara. I got it at TJ Maxx. In some TJ Maxx's, it might still be available. As you all know, some of you might know, Gerla is uh, changing their bottles. They have basically discontinued all the original, which is kind of sad if you think of it. They've discontinued all of their original bottle shapes, except for Shalimar at the moment. And uh, they are Samsara included in this discontinuation of the original bottles. And they are, they are placing Samsara within their kind of more standardized round bottles with the little bees all over them. So all of these old bottles, old, old bottle shapes are being discontinued. And hence, some of them have landed in TJ Maxx. And so I got it for around 24, 25 bucks. That's a great price, even though this is... 30 ml only, but it doesn't matter. To test out a fragrance, it's just perfect. And I get a lot of fragrance at that. So let's open it up. It's always so exciting when you open a perfume for the first time. I'm going, I have, wait, let me turn the air conditioning off for a second. So when I, when I start spraying it on me, uh, it's not going to blow away. <laughs> Even before it reaches my skin, because the air conditioner, uh, the air conditioning would just blast it away. I hope some of you have, because um, I did say yesterday that today I would be reviewing, well, like first impression, unboxing, and review of Samsara. So you had a day to run off and try it out yourself somewhere. Oh, so cute! The original, well, original. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's it's kind of eighties. So when did Samsara come out exactly? 1989 I have here. 1989 is the year of release of this fragrance. Um, okay, now I'm going to try to get, get in close. Now it, it might get pixely, but we have to see this bottle. Okay, guys, do you see it well enough? Ah, Debbie just now applied the 90s uh, per pure perfume. Amaya says, Samsara is such a classic. Okay, very blurry, says Colin. It's my internet. It's very slow. So, guys, you got to bear with me. You know? Um, let me see. Yeah. Wait, so is this the microphone when I'm talking? Or is this the... Oh, yeah, it's the microphone. Okay. It's not giving me any information on the quality of the stream. Is it blurry on everyone's end? Because if it's blurry everywhere, um, okay, Emilio says we can hear you well. Okay, well, I mean, that's the important thing. I mean, okay, let's spray it. I'm gonna spray it now, guys. I have nothing on this arm. Okay, the sprayer is kind of wonky. Let's do it all over the place. Okay, Samsara is officially, you see the red, you, you get the kind of slight oriental vibes, the, the kimono and, and all of these kind of palm trees and stuff. Hmm. So on my skin, <laughs> Johnny, spray, spray, yes. Okay, let's do it on the chest area as well. Okay, this is a great atomizer. Works perfectly, as opposed to the refillable or the refill uh, Shalimar 50 ml eau de parfum sprayer. This is a mess, a hot mess. This atomizer is really, really horrible. Perfume is nice though. Okay, so let's read a little bit uh, what is inside of Samsara. There's a lot of notes, but first of all, Jean-Paul Guerlain is the nose behind Samsara. 1989 is the year of release. So it's not an old perfume. It's an 80s fragrance, but I can sense why it's an 80s fragrance. I, I smell it out, but there's also something more timeless and ageless and could be something from past times, but as well something also from the future. Samsara does look like a bottle that does come from the Orient, but it could also come from the future. By the way, what a coincidence uh, that we're, we're dealing with 
red glass. This is red painted glass, not painted, like it's through and through. It's, it's red colored glass with gold painted on top and a red stopper. For those of you who haven't seen, one of my um, followers on uh, Instagram just uh, notified me, uh, sent me a link. Can't find it now. To Chanel number no. five low. It's freaking amazing. I have to get it. Basically, they have recolored the bottle for the Christmas. Yeah, Christmas season, holiday season is coming up. Like we ain't even past Halloween and Thanksgiving and they're already shoving Christmas into our faces. Ugh. But anyway, um, there will be or there is already released in some uh, boutiques the pure red glass bottle of Chanel Number no. 5 Low. It looks amazing. And then like the, the box has a lacquered um, raised up logo of the Chanel Number no. 5 bottle. Uh, even the stopper, the glass stopper is red. It's like blood red, the same color as Samsara. It's amazing. So anyway, that was a little scoop for me. I didn't know anything about it. Now I do. Art Souls, dang, dang it. I have to go back to work. I'll catch the live stream when it gets posted on the channel. Love you all. Love you too, Art Souls. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Lourdes says, I wore some Sara in the 90s. I recently purchased a bottle, which is different, and it just doesn't smell the same. Very disappointed. Emilia says, some Sara is like champagne. Melinda says, oh, then I will like, Emil then I will like it, Emilio. Um, Debbie says, uh, my video is just buffering here. Um, Emilia says, it's like fizzy sandalwood. Debbie says, here we go. Melinda says, I will take the fizzy sandalwood. Okay, guys. So basically, there's something very Chanel-like in, um, in Samsara. Um, but let's get to the notes. So in the top notes, we have lemon, bergamot, ylang ylang, peach, and green notes. Middle notes, rose, jasmine, orris root, violet, iris, and narcissus. Base notes, I wanna say, Amber, tonka bean, sandalwood, iris, musk, and vanilla. Now, the Guerlain vanilla is a totally different type of vanilla uh, that we're used to smelling from Dior. Uh, they approach the whole vanilla concept from a very different angle. Um, and then, of course, Chanel almost has no vanilla. And when they do use vanilla, it's, it's a very tame uh, type of vanilla. But... The vanilla in Guerlain's fragrances, as opposed to the Dior fragrances, is a deep vanilla. It's a, it's a dusty vanilla. A Dior fragrances have a vanilla that is not so deep. It's a bit more so in the surface, a bit more superficial, sweetened up and uh, not, not dusty. It, it, it's a, it could be a cloying, sticky vanilla, not dusty. Guerlain's vanilla is not cloying and sticky. It's dusty. It's a dry type of vanilla, but it's a deep vanilla. So that's what we sense out in Samsara as well. Samsara is beautiful. At the moment, like first impressions, I am liking it more than, than I do Shalimar. Uh, it does have a hint of aldehyde opening, sparkling, bubbly openings, just like um, uh, Chanel perfumes do. Maybe that's something that unites it to Chanel, to my nose, but also the Lang Lang and the Rose. That's something very similar. And we know, I wanted to leave this for um, a future review of another Guerlain fragrance, but I can already mention it. Now, for those of you who love perfumes already probably know the competition and the sort of... Um, game playing uh, and quarrels that would happen between, you know, Chanel and Guerlain. And uh, it did kind of make a bet who would come closer to developing each other's perfumes. Uh, would Guerlain come close to copying Chanel number no. five? And would Chanel come close to copying Shalimar? Uh, Guerlain won and they got the right to release their perfume, which they named Liu. And Liu is still in production and it still does smell like Chanel number no. five. But 
so they do come from similar times and both Guerlain and Chanel, and they do have similarities. Samsara came out in the 80s and yet late 80s, and yet it has a It has an older soul than an 80s soul. But you smell out, due to all the violets, it's it's kind of going in the direction Mesia, Chanel's Mesia, or let's say Mesia goes into the direction of Samsara because Mesia was made before Samsara. Um, and that's because of all the violet and the oris um, and the iris, the rose, as well as the narcissus. We do have berries in Misa as well. This one doesn't have the berries. It's drier, it's more refined. It's really, really beautiful. This is kind of what Misia should smell like, in my opinion. <laughs> Let's see what the comments say. Uh, Khan asks, do I get any similarities to Bois d'Azil? Which one do you prefer? Yes, I do get similarities to Bois d'Azil, totally. There's like a sweet sandalwoody accord in here that completely reminds me of Bois d'Azil. Debbie says it's definitely an oriental. I have to turn on the uh, air conditioning again, guys, because I'm dying. Um, Debbie is, and she says, oh my God, I'm falling into this one. Uh, Debbie says, Olivier made a guerlain. Yeah, I think Misia is the closest we get to a guerlain fragrance from Chanel's end. Samsara does have hints of Bois d'Azil, but it reminds me of something else. And as, as it develops on my skin, I might recognize what it is, but it might take me some more days of testing it out. I love the bottle. It just fits so well in the hand. It's such a pity that they changed the bottle. Um, yes, very aldehydic, says Emilio, in the opening. Non-sweet. Debbie is falling into this. <laughs> um, Melinda says, mm, Misia, perfume, American princess's perfume. Melinda says, this may be my first Guerlain purchase. Uh, it's a good one. And guys, I mean, try TJ Maxx or whatever, because these old bottles that are now discontinued, you know, you might find them for a really cheap price. And I think that's great, given the fact that this is a Guerlain fragrance, you know, it's not a drugstore perfume. Oh, it's wonderful. It's so, I mean, it's wonderful because I love my Chanel's and this one is very much Chanel. Uh, and it gives me hints of everything. There's a little bit of Chanel number five in there as well. There's a little bit of, uh, of Misia. There's a little bit of Bois des Iles. There's a little bit of Allure. There's a little bit of... Mm. There's a little bit of number 22 in the kind of instancy touch, this, there's a smokiness in here as well. It's a wonderful oriental fragrance. Gee, where if? <laughs> um, Amaya says, uh, Samsara is such a classic. What do you think of Amarige de Givenchy? Oh yes, listen, the original Amarige, as well as the original Isatis, both of them, I love them to pieces. The new reformulations, not so much. Johnny asks, which time of the day would I use it? I would, like just from the first kind of skin contact and the first impressions, I would tell you this one for me is like aperitivo time, but from 6 p.m. onwards, that's when I would use it, from 6 p.m. onwards for now. But I will be testing it in the, in the morning, I will be testing it in the afternoon. I'm gonna give this one a go throughout all different periods of the day. So good, like very rich and opulent, but in such a delicious way. Um, I have to say though, the samsara that I smelled out of the new bottles smells different. It doesn't have this smoky, dusty depth. It 
the one I smelled out from the newer bottles has kind of more of a bubbly effect. I might be wrong. Did anybody try out samsara from the homogenized rounded bottles with the bees? <laughs> Colin asks, how do fragrances fall into TJ Maxx anyway? From where do they source, etc.? They have buyers that kind of roam all over the place and uh, purchase stock from shops that are either closing down or that are kind of discontinuing certain products or after the sales in some shops as well as perfumeries, after certain products have not been sold, then they kind of try to find a way to, in bigger quantities, get rid of it. And that's where kind of TJ Maxx jumps in. They're very well connected to all of these shops all over the world, basically, and they try to source from them uh, their leftovers. That's it. That's how it kind of works. Although some brands, just like with outlet stores or outlet shops, some brands also actually have contracts with TJ Maxx secretly, and they produce clothing in particular. They produce uh, certain pieces of clothing extra for TK Maxx or TJ Maxx. It's actually the same company. Uh, this is also a funny story. It's so. In Europe, it's called TK Maxx. In America, it's TJ Maxx, uh, but it's the same company. But somebody actually owned the TK Maxx name, logo, in Europe and wanted a lot of money. So TJ Maxx said, it, sorry, somebody in Europe owned TJ Maxx. So TJ Maxx needed to pay a lot of money to get their name used in Europe as well. And they didn't want to pay all that money, so they renamed the company to TK Maxx. But it is, in fact, TJ Maxx. Anyway. Let's digress. Um, Mia says TK Maxx doesn't sell perfumes at lower prices anymore. Mm, well, I got this one, so it, they, they do. And I got the Cartier there as well. Um, Melinda's excited about this one. Amaya says, ah, he said he's my childhood. Also, Rive Gauche by Yves Saint Laurent, too many to count. Rive Gauche. Wow, an aldehyde masterpiece, the 70s version of Rive Gauche. Even the one today, it's still quite, um, quite good, but I love Rive Gauche, and especially the pure perfume of Rive Gauche. If you can hunt that one down, that, and not even Chanel aldehydes come close to the aldehydes used in Rive Gauche. It's like a metallic perfume. It's incredible. Can 1996. The Eau de Toilette is butterier and softer than the Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Parfum is a mess in the beginning, but then it becomes way more comfortable. I can't use the Eau de Parfum so much because it can be overwhelming sometimes. I see. Well, the Eau de Toilette is definitely strong enough, and it's actually already now, after some minutes have passed, it, it gives me the effect and the illusion of smelling like Chanel Number no. 5, the pure perfume, after over an hour of it being on my skin. Like, that's how intense uh, this one is. So powdery. Ah, oh, the orris root and the iris, um, together with the violet, and the sandal and the vanilla, it's just really, 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 really beautiful. It makes you feel comfortable, but it makes you feel sophisticated as well at the same time, which is a great feeling. Amaya says, I agree, samsara is an evening fragrance. As a young girl, I looked forward to growing up, being a woman, then uh, buying some. Colin says, Emilio, perhaps TK does not, but surely TJ does. Skittles, Amaya links, yes, I have them as well. I've always been a, a fragrance addict. So. It's really, I mean, where have you been all my life? That's all I have to say. Um, it's a wonderful fragrance. I'm not a big fan of all of these kind of oriental inspired bottles. I mean, I love the fact that it's red. I love the color red. Uh, but the shape, I mean, it's okay. You know, it's good for travel. It's a flat travel uh, bottle. I like that. I like that much more than these kind of round, chunky bottles that... Uh, you know, for example, here, this one, Fahrenheit by Dior, you know, it's the pure perfume. I mean, it's such thick glass and it's, 
it's only 75 ml, but it's so heavy and it's really not the best thing for traveling. Oh, but it smells so good. Uh, but th this is just a beautiful, beautiful shape for travel. And I think most of these perfume houses also need to, to be perfectly honest with you guys, I would, if I were working for one of these bigger uh, perfume brands or houses, I would definitely develop a bottle shape for the bathroom for those of us who love to have huge bottles in their boudoirs, you know, in their bathrooms, in their houses, in their homes, um, in both spray and splash variations. And that would have a specific, also chunkier, heavier bottle design. But then I would design a totally different type of bottle for travel use, 30 ml or 50 ml, flatter, different kind of style, completely something catering to the needs of today, where, you know, if you're flying a lot, uh, the air companies, the, the airplanes, they're going to weigh every single ounce of anything you got, and you're going to have to be very careful, you know, so I would kind of think in that direction, creating bottles that are very travel friendly for those who want to travel, so you could purchase a bottle that's good for traveling, and then I would have the chunkier bottles to just keep at home. So, this brings me to Chanel. You know, I love the bottles of the Les, Les Ou, or Les Ou, uh, Venice, Biarritz, and Deauville. But first of all, they're 125 milliliters. 100 ml is the limit for traveling, so you can't take them with you on board. You have to kind of uh, put them in your uh, giveaway, that the stove, what's it called, uh, luggage. And they didn't create, you know, a, a 50 or up to 100 ml flat bottle for those. That makes no sense. It really, it's very counterproductive in terms of sales as well. So a lot of these companies aren't even thinking in that direction, really. They're not thinking practicality at all. In today's day and age, in 2018, where practicality is everything, really, because you got to compact. There's more and more human beings on the planet. There's less and less space because the space is what it is. There's more and more junk. And what do these companies do? Guerlain, for example, puts some Sara out of this flat flask, which is beautiful, and puts it into the round, chunky, with bees on a bottle. Absolutely no sense to me. Melinda's like, I'm running to TJ Maxx after this live stream. <laughs> oh, the connection is unstable. Okay. It said the collection the connection is unstable. But now it says we're back, so I hope I hope you guys can see me. Emilio says to Melinda, try to find aromatics in black by Clinique 2. It's stunning. Hey, I am a dedicated perfume addict. Yes, you are, Melinda. We all are. So let's see how this one is developing now. Oh, it's so wonderful. It's becoming softer and rounder. There's like a tiny kind of hint of honey in there as well. Um, very soothing, very soothing. But is that the, is it more, wait, is this the bergamot? What did I see here? The narcissus. That yeah, could be the narcissus. But the peach, now this is something, you know, the peach in here is almost not susceptible, but... The concept of the peach, you know, having this fluffy, furry fruit, not a nectarine that doesn't have the fluffy aspect to it, but a peach with all of its fluffiness really has a, a sweet, ripe peach. When you eat it, it kind of fills your throat with that sweet juiciness. It's, it's so delicious. That's the same effect samsara has on me. And in that respect, I sense out the peach because I, I have that slight, tingly, fluffy, furry, soothing kind of olfactory experience whenever I inhale it off my skin. It's wonderful, really, really wonderful. It's definitely, um, definitely worth, worth the purchase. It's way up there with the best fragrances I've ever smelled for sure. And yes, it's unisex. It's totally unisex. It's quite sensual um, because it's warm but dry at the same time. And it's very inviting. It invites you to kind of start sweating, if you know what I mean. <laughs> 
Clear picture, the quality is great now. Okay, see you clearly now. Yay, I'm so happy. Okay, guys, thanks. Speaking of honey, Colin says, um, Debbie says, this is divine. I will need a spray. Yes, Debbie, get some Sarah. Guys, plus it's the same red glass that Chanel Number no. 5 Low is going to have. So it's going to be cute to have them side by side. I can't wait. I'm going to rush uh, tomorrow as soon as I can to my Chanel uh, boutique of choice and, and ask them if they already have the red Low bottles. And if they do, we're going to have another live stream uh, checking that one out. Um, but actually, there's a change in schedule, my working schedule at work. So it's a bit of a mess. Um, Anyway, so the plan is tomorrow uh, to do the live unboxing of Chanel number no. 19, the Eau de Parfum. There you have it. This is the idea. And to compare it with uh, the Eau de Toilette and the Pure Perfume and to just do, you know, and also Chanel number no. 19 Poudre, those four. That's the idea to kind of live stream tomorrow, approximately same time as today. But uh, hopefully I'll manage, considering my, my work schedule, if not the day after tomorrow. But then if I do hunt down the red bottle of Chanel number no. 5, I will die if I get a red bottle of Chanel number no. 5. That's amazing. Um, so Colin says, speaking of honey, what are your thoughts on Cartier, uh, L'Envol, Eau de Parfum, and or Eau de Toilette? I just picked up the new Eau de Toilette from TJ Maxx the other week. Cartier L'Envol. I don't know that one. I don't know it. <laughs> Melinda says, ah, start sweating. Uh, Can says, uh, can you, um, what do you think about the new Guerlain bottles? Uh, they all have the same shape with different labels. I guess they want to save money. I'm glad that you've you have the old red bottle. Um, I don't know when you tuned in, Khan, but I did mention this at the beginning of this uh, live stream. Um, I'm not a fan of this kind of homogenizing all bottles, all the shapes into one particular shape. I mean, all of the brands have been doing it, actually, Dior as well, um, including discontinuing certain bottles or certain products completely. You know, the poison range of the first released poison from 1986 there was almost 20 different variations of products surrounding, you know, the, the, the poison uh, uh, release. There was a uh, talcum powder, and there was dusting powder, and there was a third type of powder, body powder. And then there was a body oil. Then there was a shower gel. Then there was a gelopal, which was a different type of gel. There was a bath gel. Then there was a body cream, there was a body lotion, there was a body milk, there was a deodorant spray, there was a deodorant stick, there was a deodorant uh, spray without gas, like uh, not under pressure. There was an Esprit de Parfum in like four or five different sizes. There was a pure perfume. There was an Eau de Toilette. There was an Eau de Cologne, Eau de Cologne Light. Um, then there was even more products. I mean, it's, it's insane. Wonderful range of luxury. Now there's only one, actually only two, available online with your the, the extract of poison. And then in the shops, you can only get the Eau de Toilette bottle. And that's it. That's it. So Guerlain is doing a similar thing. They are diminishing their, um, let's say, choice that they offer you. They're offering you way less in terms of variations of product and they're homogenizing them by placing them all in the same bottle just labeling them differently as much as i like those b bottles that were created for the king and queen of blah 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 what have you of versailles i still like okay have a couple of perfumes that are like that but the rest should be the rest should be uh individualized that's why Khan, i got this one for uh cheaper at TJ Maxx because this bottle is going out of production. That's why, you know, you can find it for dumping prices like 25 or $26. Uh, dollars. Yes. A poison bracelet. Uh, I think I showed the poison bracelet, Emilio, in my poison review video. 
But the poison bracelet was one of those, like, you know, for some Christmas, like a limited edition one-off thing, you know, it wasn't in their constant uh, assortment. So they're in their stock always, you know, just like this red bottle of Chanel number no. five is going to be a one-off thing. But that, I have the bracelet, it's gorgeous. It's glass with kind of like a golden thread running around it. And, and the perfume is inside the bracelet. You kind of open it up and you pour the poison into whatever you want. It's amazing. Um, give all the extras to me. I love the layering, says Debbie. Um, Melinda asks, was it a snake or just a purple bracelet? It was a purple bracelet that had painted dots of green over it. And then it had a golden thread running around it. It made it look like a snake. But then it had two stoppers on two ends, which are the, the same glass stoppers that the poison bottle has. So it does look like a snake, especially because of the golden thread running through it. But it wasn't really a snake. They sell the poison pure parfum too. Yes, that's what I said. You're not listening, boo. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I said it. The extract that you can buy online, the extract of the perfume, uh, and the, the eau de toilette that you can buy in stores. Google it, Melinda. It's stunning. Jacob has it. It's a great piece, super delicate because you can't, you, you can't bump into anything. If you bump into anything, it's going to break. Like it's literally just meant to be looked at basically like a jewel, you know? So let's see how Samsara is developing. It's even more like Chanel number no. five right now. The Ylang Ylang with the, with the rose is taking over on my skin. And actually at the moment, it's giving me Chanel Eau de Toilette vibes. So what I'm gonna do, because I have my little table here ready, I just so happen to have Chanel number no. five of the toilet here next to me. So let's spray that one on this arm. And let's compare the two. Now, of course, in the opening notes, this one is totally different, but let's give it some time. Let's let it dry in and dry down. And then we're going to, oh, Chanel number no. five. Like, okay. Samsara is divine, but there's nothing like Chanel number no. five. But anyway, let's let this one... Um, Dry down a little bit uh, so we could compare the two. Samsara is beautiful. And it does give me hints of the 80s in the best of ways. It's, it's rich and, and opulent, slightly decadent like the 80s were. It doesn't um, shy away from telling you, hey, I'm here and I'm ready to have fun. I'm ready to enjoy life. And I just want to, um, I just don't want to be afraid to wear what I want to wear to uh, accessorize the way I want to accessorize. As Dolly Parton would say, more is more, uh, less is not more. Less is less, more is more, and I want more of it. So um, Samsara kind of is very enticing, it's inviting, it invites you to exaggerate a little bit. And I, I really need that. I'm missing that in these, in these times or in this day and age where we are literally um, bombarded with kind of like, tone it down. Don't do too much. Be politically correct. Don't say that. You're going to offend this. I'm a minority. You're a minority. We're all a minority. For all a minority, nobody's a minority anymore. You know what I mean? And Samsara is kind of like reminding us of the fact that we are allowed to have fun. We are allowed to make certain types of jokes. And that sarcasm uh, is not a bad thing after all. It's so interesting when I watched the interview with uh, Jennifer Saunders uh, from Absolutely Fabulous, you know, uh, right after they made the movie, she said, you know, the jokes and the writing we would get away with in the 90s, we could never do that today. Uh, the political correctness mafia would block us immediately. Times have changed. Time have, times, we think we're more free today, but we're not. We have less freedom today than we did uh, in the past. Of course, the waves of amount of freedom come and go. You know, the amount of freedom we might have had in the 80s, we might not have now, but we also had less freedom before the 80s than we did in the 80s. So it's all going to, you know, it's a coming and going thing. But it's interesting to hear Jennifer Saunders say something like that because 
she's been working in comedy and British comedy is, is very satiric, you know, the satire there and, and the, the dark edges of their humor is very specific and precise and very deep and dark. And it, and it can be quite aggressive at times, but they have a different sense of humor. So to hear her say something like in today's day and age, you can't get away with everything the way you could in comedy in the nineties. It, it says it all basically, but not just that. Also, towards the end of the 90s, in some of the episodes of Absolutely Fabulous, you have instances where Edwina, her character, Edina Monsoon, uh, she's a PR person. Um, she would even give like speeches in front of public in the TV show saying like, what's all this? You know, we're not allowed to say anything anymore. We're not allowed to have fun anymore. You know, and she's just like, I want to start a campaign to liberate us again, to be able to have fun. And Samsara reminds me a little bit of that freedom to choose to have fun. It's lovely and it's sophisticated. And I don't smoke, but this, it makes me want to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It makes me want to just like go outside and the heat that we're having right now, another heat wave, and just like smoke a cigarette and just like chillax, you know? It, it's giving me very much Blanche, uh, from a streetcar named Desire from Tennessee Williams. It's giving me very much a Blanche Dubois. Wait a minute. Was she also Devereux? No, I think she was Dubois. Um, from a streetcar named Desire. It's giving me that kind of hot, but at the same time, dry, smoky, and dusty feeling, you know? Actually, Samsara makes me want to rewatch True Blood. <laughs> I love True Blood so much, but actually only the first two or three seasons. So anyway, what, what are you guys saying? Um, Melinda has changed her mind again on the extract of Poison. Now she loves it. <laughs> Debbie has a, an auto toilet sample of number five tried out and compared the two. But but you have the pure perfume of Samsara, right? I'm, I'm testing the auto toilet. Khan says, do you prefer Chanel number five uh, eau de toilette over the eau de parfum? Yes, I do. <laughs> Melinda is high on number five. I always prefer number five, uh, pure perfume, more than the eau de toilette and eau de parfum. I don't really compare the pure perfume with the eau de toilette since they both kind of came out almost at the same time. Uh, they're very different. They cater to different needs. Back in the day, you know, in perfumery, they would really develop an eau de toilette for a specific need. They wouldn't just water something down or just for the sake of making something cheaper. The Eau Toilette is a different beast altogether from the Pure Perfume. They share the same DNA, but they are quite different. And I love them both for very different reasons. And I couldn't pick really, you know. Chanel number no. five is a bit dirtier. It's skankier, the Eau Toilette, than Samsara. Samsara is more clean and sober, uh, but still they kind of share that... Uh, Chanel number no. 5 Eau de Toilette does turn a slightly skanky on me through the process of the dry down. But once that, once we've passed that skanky hill, we go down into a meadow of powdery bliss, which is similar to Samsara. So we still have to wait to get there. Hey, Gail. How you doing, Gail? Gail says, Melly Debbie. Hello, lovely ladies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Debbie is freezing in Alaska right now. And she says, so Samsara works in all weathers. Uh, good to know. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess so. Good to know. Uh, so delicious. So delicious. Uh, Cherry Beetle, you know why Jean-Paul uh, Guerlain got fired from Guerlain, right? Oh, do tell. Share with us, Cherry Beetle. Amelia says, summer is gone. Had to turn on the radiators, LOL. <laughs> and here I am with air conditioning. Um, poison soap opera. <laughs> oh, I do have poison soap as well. Two different, three different types of soaps were also produced in the in the poison range. Melinda says, "True Blood," one of my favorites. Khan says, "I'm." Smoking right now, and I know exactly what you mean. It literally smells like burning woods. I always love to smoke when I wear Issey Miyake for women. 
Oh, that's interesting. There are some fragrance. I know this is a really bad topic. We shouldn't be talking about smoking. Smoking kills. Yes, we know. Again, you see what I mean? It's the political correctness that makes me have to say this. Fine. Whatever. But I'm not a smoker personally. But that doesn't mean that I can't enjoy the taste of certain things. Even Coca-Cola kills you. Even oxygen kills you. Every time you inhale oxygen, the free radicals kill a lot of our cells. It, like everything kills. So, it, it, you know, it's not about... You're going to die of something sometime. I'm not saying you should choose to die by smoking cigarettes. You shouldn't. But if one time in a year you have that need of that feeling of that kind of allure that surrounds the act of smoking, then, you know, then do it. I mean, it's your life. It's your choice. You have the freedom to choose that. So, um, Debbie says we need the tea. So, Beetle, spill the tea. Melinda says, Eau de Toilette number five, very sparkly. I do love it too. Amelia says, oh, was it because of the ray? What do you mean? You need the tea? Oh, because Guerlain said something racist? Huh. Okay. Well, tell us, tell us, tell us. Share with us. Melinda says, uh, tea sounds good, Debbie. <laughs> spill the tea. Let's see how it's developing. I think the peachy touch to this is just incredible. And it's very dry on me, but it's very soothing. It's very comforting. It makes me feel like everything is going to be okay. Now, if I were to go back through all my video reviews, I don't know how many I've made in my life. So it would be hard for me to pinpoint out in which video perfume reviews, I did say this about other fragrances, but I do know that I did say it about other fragrances as well. Certain fragrances just make me feel safe. Certain fragrances make me feel like everything is going to be just fine. Everything is going to be okay. And this, this one is one of those. Ah, Cherry Beetle says, now let me read this first before I read it out loud because I don't know if I can read it. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Beetle. Uh, you can read it in the comments. I cannot read this comment out loud. Um, that's, that's quite heavy to say. And I mean, I don't know what to tell you guys. Like, yeah, it's sad. If that's the reason, I mean, if that's the thing that this person said yeah there, no comment on that I mean what is there to comment it's obvious uh, not cool not cool of uh, of Gillan to say that Debbie says I just vape I quit eight years ago <laughs> then Emilio's like says okay uh that Guerlain said the, the word and, and said more. And now Jin Katoon's in, just got here. Who said the N word? Yeah. Uh, Cherry Beetle says, Guerlain was already sold to LVMH and Jean-Paul Guerlain was held on as an advisor and was fired right after the incident. But you know, at the same time, of course, this is horrible uh, and not, not acceptable, but there is a but. The but is these huge companies, they, they do horrible things. And they also employ people in factories in poorer countries and pay them nothing and almost nothing. And, you know, but they're not held accounted for. They're not. But something like this in our society, saying something like this, and he's done for. But the entire company has that power, also legally and morally in today's day and age, to say, well, uh, you know, we don't agree with what this person says, so we fire them because what they said is morally not acceptable. But how is it morally acceptable, on the other hand, to 
not talk about the fact that you do have factories in poor countries working for you for, for nothing, basically. That's modern day slavery to me personally. So it's a double standard. It's a double moral. Um, both parties should be held accountable for this, not just one. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying we should justify what he said. Absolutely no justification there. We should not justify that. On top of not justifying that, we also have to hold accountable the entire company. In this case, uh, whoever bought uh, the Gelong company. You know what I mean? Kant says, do you think Thierry Vassa makes a good job? I mean, he's not from the Guerlain heritage, but he already made some masterpieces. I wonder who will become the new in-house perfumer for Guerlain. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm just shyly diving into Guerlain um, lately, more and more so, because I did promise you guys that I would do it, and it's happening. As promised, Supadi delivers. But... Um, the newer releases, especially like their own type of privé line, um, it's very expensive. In my opinion, overpriced. The perfumes don't deliver the character that I expect from a Guerlain fragrance. I did try the tuberose. Uh, what's it called? Tuberose something. Marvelous tuberose or something like that. Um, and it's interesting, but it just it, it never really blossoms to its full potential for the price they demand for it. It's just not worth it to me. Uh, I don't know if Thierry Vassa did Terracotta. Terracotta is one of their like kind of late, last like mass release new fragrances. I do, I'm not a fan of Terracotta. So I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Jinkam asks, what is your favorite tuberose? My favorite tuberose, um, uh, gosh, there's so many. Because the thing is, I love fraca, and, uh, or fraca, but fraca um, also has like a bubble gummy note in its new formulation. It's not as deep and dark as uh, the 40s version, but I love the tuberose in it. Um, but I, I would have, I would slightly modify the current formulation of it to make it even better. I love the tuberose and carnal flower, uh, from Frederick Mal, but I, I really love it. But the melon in there needn't be, in my opinion. So that kind of messes with it a little bit. To, it, it, it avoids it from becoming the tuberose perfume for me. Surprisingly enough, I'm not a big fan of Alexander McQueen's pure perfume, but surprisingly enough, I do like the Eau de Parfum very much. The tuberose, and they all have the night blooming flowers in there. They, they, put, they put the jasmine, they put the ylang ylang, they put the tuberose in there. It's not a dark, it's not a night smelling perfume, but the tuberose in the Eau de Parfum of Alexander McQueen, it, it could be my favorite. Now, Coty, you know, is producing uh, Alexander McQueen, and I'm not a big fan of Coty, although they do do a good job with Boudoir. Well, they did do a good job with Boudoir, but now Vivian Westwood uh, went to another company to produce their fragrance. So let's see how the new Boudoir will smell. But prior to Coty Lancaster produced Boudoir. But anyway, um, what was I saying? So, you know, tuberose tends to smell soapy. It can turn soapy. And it has a slight kind of hint of soapiness in Alexander McQueen. So the Alexander McQueen tuberose would be better if it had less of that soapy touch. But on certain days when the humidity is just right, uh, Alexander McQueen's Eau de Parfum turns divine on my skin. And I then, that's my favorite tuberose. But it can go off very easily. Um, but I adore the carnal flower tuberose. 
Carnal Flower Tuberose is maybe actually my favorite tuberose, despite the fact that it has the melon. Cannes does not like the Guerlain exclusives. Uh, they only have 75 milliliter bottles. Uh, Fragrance for All asks, have you ever been interested in creating your own perfumes? Uh, I have. I, I, yes, I actually made also videos with that topic. I even uh, made one particular video where I mentioned how if I created uh, my first, like, first, the first summer love perfume, how it would smell. You can check that video out. <laughs> the media says, I'll leave that to perfumers who know what they're doing. Jin Cat says, I must experience carnal flower. Yes, you should try it out. It's... Um, it's not easy to love immediately. It takes some time to understand it and to let it kind of get to you. But once it gets to you, it's mesmerizing. It's amazing. It really is. It really is. It's just so expensive. I'm still debating whether or not to get the 100 milliliter bottle. It's just because it's, the price is insane. And I'm, I'm not so sure it warrants that price. You know what I mean? I don't know. Especially because, again, as we were talking yesterday, they're not investing all that money in promotion. They're not investing all, any money really in promotion. It's a niche fragrance. And just, you know, if we just think about the raw ingredients used for it, it's not like they're so expensive. I mean, I don't know. Samsara is turning softer and softer. It has a slight cosmetic touch to it, which I love. I love when a perfume has slight makeup-y, cosmetic-y feel to the smell of it. Divine. Samsara, divine. Definitely, uh, you can get your hands on this discontinued bottle shape. Uh, do so, because it will be cheaper than buying it in the new bottles, but you will really enjoy a perfume that has a story to tell, like for, for sure. It's powdery. The vanilla is not so intense uh, as in Shalimar. You know, the Shalimar vanilla, it's like it's all about the vanilla. This one is much softer. There's less vanilla in there and there's more um, peach, violet, orris root, and rose. That's and, and sandal, a hint of sandalwood, which gives that kind of smoky honey vibe to it. It's wonderful, really wonderful. Okay, now we're over the hill of the skanky Chanel number no. five with a toilet smell on my skin. And we're going into that meadow of, of powdery dryness. Uh, some, they're both dry, but of the two, Samsara is Samsara Eau de Toilette is sweeter in comparison to Chanel number no. five with a toilet. Beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Um, so beautiful that tomorrow I'm going to be wearing this one all day long. And I'm going to take it with me to all the places I have to run through, through the city. I'm going to, because it's such a perfect little size, I'm just going to bloop, throw it into my pocket, into my bag. And I'm just going to keep spraying away the whole day. I want to live it to its full potential. Oh, my God. It's going to be so devastating to the people around me. But who cares? I'm doing this for myself. Delicious, really delicious. Out of the bottle, it has hints of allure. But then again, allure is also all about the peach, so. Khan asks, do I like Truth or Dare by Madonna? It should smell like fracas, but I'm sure fracas is way better. Um, it's sweeter than fracas. It's cheaper than fracas. It smells cheaper than fracas. Of all of the... Um, um, star fragrances this is one of the better ones but i don't wear it it's not my cup of tea even though i do respect it i have to say pity that it's been discontinued
Jinkat says, I've seen it for $400, but have never smelled it. What did you see for $400? Truth or dare by Madonna? No way. It shouldn't cost that much. And Fraka should also not cost that much because Fraka is still in production. Khan says, I use Michael Kors. Uh, Michael, at the moment, that one is nearly a tuberose, solely for, uh, with some greenness and freshness to tame down the animal nuances. It's similar to Gucci Bloom, but slightly heavier. Skittle says, I'm running to TJ Maxx tomorrow, LOL. <laughs> Choppy says, hi, Jacob. Hi, Choppy. Talking about uh, Guerlain fragrances, what do you think about the most exclusive golden box range? Like Mitsuko, Lor Bleu, uh, and uh, Jardin, um, Jardin de Bagatelle. If there's one thing that Guerlain does, um, they offer you, again, or, ornate with all the bees, all of these like special editions from time to time, in crystal, in a bigger shape, a liter bottle of Shalimar, this or that. I mean, if you're really collecting bottles and into that, I say go for it. But since I am a person that loves to wear perfume. I like practicality. I don't go for something more expensive because the bottle has gold on it or whatever. I mean, if I can get the same, that's why I purchased Shalimar, uh, the refill of the Eau de Parfum. I'm trying to, this is also crazy. Guerlain is not producing the uh, containers, the bottles that contain the refills. They still produce the refills, so you can buy the refill but the refillable version is not in production anymore. So I'm hunting it down secondhand. But what I want to say is 50 ml of this glass bottle, it has a wonderful Guerlain logo on the stopper and it's a spray, costs less than a 50 ml glass spray bottle of Shalimar. That's not a refill. You know what I mean? So I go for this one. I don't care for the aesthetic there. I care for practicality. Quite frankly, the Shalimar bottle is not practical and not the best design in my opinion. Yes, it's old school looking and everything, but it just doesn't hit the right chords with me. And this is way more practical for travel, slim. It will fit everywhere. Um, the sprayer is awful, though. But anyway, what I want to say is I don't care so much for this type of opulence. I know I'm going to try to hunt down the red bottle of Chanel Number no. 5, but I am sure that the red bottle of Chanel Number no. 5, Lo, uh, will not cost more than their regular Chanel Number no. 5 low in the same size you know what i mean so that's why i'm running low on my bottle anyway so it I, you know it warrants a repurchase that's fine but to like spend extra money on something that has an extra detail element to it no not really for me emilia says narcotic venus by nasomato is an incredible tuberose perfume I've smelled the entire range of Nazomato years ago, we're, we're years and years and years ago. And I remember China White was the one that impressed me the most, but I still didn't warrant a purchase back then. Now if I re-smelled it, I don't know. I think they discontinued China White. Colin says, one of the driest I know, Eau de Gentian Blanche. Yes, I have it. I like it very much. Here it is. It's a Cologne, Eau de Gentian Blanche, but that doesn't have tuberose in it. It's not a tuberose fragrance. Ken asks, is Samsara your favorite uh, Guerlain fragrance? Um, I can't say that yet. I, For me to be able to judge a range of fragrances, I really need to dive into them. I'm very cautious before I kind of say, yeah, this is my favorite. Um, you know, with Chanel, it's easier. I've been living and working with Chanel for decades. So I know them. I know them to the core. Guerlain, I'm still a newbie. You know, I'm still carefully entering their world and experiencing it. And I'm enjoying the ride. It's like watching a TV show for the first time. I don't want to know how it ends yet. I'm enjoying the ride. So give me time. I, I can't tell you if it's my favorite or not. I do love you very much. But I love the story behind you very much. I love the story of Guerlain trying to uh, create uh, Chanel number, no. recreate Chanel number no. five. Um, so Liu would be one of my favorites for now, but you never know, things can change at any given moment in time. Debbie says, bottles mean nothing to me, it's all about the juice. 
Gail says, I agree that ultimately it is about the perfume. However, I admit I love a beautiful bottle. Oh, Gail, don't get me wrong. I adore a beautiful bottle. Adore a beautiful bottle. Seriously. I mean, you know, I, I even hunt down huge factice bottles. You know, my huge, uh, like it's this, this big um, opium uh, pour homme factice bottle, the dummy bottle, uh, or the Dior Addict dummy bottle. Like, I love beautiful bottles, you know, for sure. And if I manage to hunt them down for a reasonable price, of course I'm going to get them. Khan says, will you make a video to Dior Joy Review in the future? I'm so excited to hear your thoughts about it, and especially if you like it more than Poison Girl. Um, Khan, you can watch my yesterday's video, um, the, vet the top vetivers in comparison. I actually talk about Joy there, because yesterday I tried Joy for the first time. I still have the little paper strip here. Now, after one day, it's dried down to a watery, bland, bland nothingness. Um, no, I'm, I don't. I don't like Joy. I think Joy is a watered down version of uh, New Look, nineteen forty seven. Uh, people also say it reminds them of Chanel Allure. To me, it's more a Dior version of Allure, but it's more a Dior mass released version of New Look. In the dry down, uh, the dry down of New Look is like the opening of Joy. I don't know why they would make a mass release fragrance that's so banal and boring, to be honest with you. Uh, I prefer Poison Girl to Joy. Emilia says, well, Manatee is the only perfume bottle that impresses me. And Melinda says, no one does a bottle like Chanel, sigh. Melinda, look up, Google it, the red bottle of Chanel Number no. 5 Low and the packaging. Uh. Like I died. I saw it and I died. It's it's like it's like eighties and nineties Chanel red. That intense red nail polish and lipstick from the eighties and nineties. That's the color of the bottle and that's the color of the packaging. I died. Died. Choppy says, actually, the Guerlain exclusive range is not more expensive because of the packaging. To be honest, the bottles are pretty regular. The quality is much higher. And because of that, they're often discontinued. Well, they're actually discontinued because people don't purchase them. It's all about the money. People will be purchasing. They will be uh, producing. I also think, you know, the thing is this. Um, for example, when it comes to Liu, it's a 125 milliliter bottle. They want over $250, $270 for it. Like, it's insane. And, again, the bottle isn't that special. It does come with an atomizer, but I think they took away the atomizers now. Um, too high, you know. And Liu was not that expensive uh, in the past. And, and Liu is a perfume from the 20s. So I'm saying this because Liu is a part of their other Exclusive range. Colin says, I can't even find... Okay, guys, well, I'm going to find it now, and I'm going to show you quickly. I guess this uh, falls under fair use. I hope I'm allowed to show it to you. So this is from Instagram from an Instagram profile called Stefania1712. And uh, how can I show this to you guys? Because um, the camera is so far away from me. <laughs> OK. So this is the bottle. Packaging. Like more pro like bottle and promotional bits. Another photo of the bottle. Look at all of this. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, 
Did you see it, guys? Could you see it? Can you tell me? Okay, Colin's like, oh my God. Oh, Colin says, wow. Ken says, that dark red bottle looks insane. I know, right? <laughs> uh, they do not smell the same. Number 22 is number five's old grumpy grandma. It's more sophisticated. Um, number 22 is more sophisticated than Chanel number five. I don't know if it is, but it warrants to be up there in the Olympus of best fragrances in the world together with number five. It's not been given enough credit. <laughs> Melinda just fainted. We have to hunt it down, Melly. Like the hunt is on. Like tomorrow, the first thing I'm rushing off to, to Chanel to like ask, what gives? When is this thing coming out? Choppies is gorge. Gail says, I thought atomizers generally were bad for uh, evaporation. What are your thoughts? No, not necessarily. Ah, oh, you mean the ones that you squish on the side? Oh, horrible, horrible. They're horrible, of course, because the bottle is actually not sealed. There's a hole in the front. They evaporate immediately. You can't turn the bottle, it leaks. It's a mess. Those squishy things, atomizers, horrible. Don't ever, you know, don't ever do that. <laughs> don't ever buy a perfume that has that. So let's see. The dry down is very light and powdery. Samsara really comes to. It's very delicate. It's very light. It's not very long lasting. It's already become very close to the skin. Uh, we're one hour and 11 minutes into trying it on. So I can all tell you that the dry down is very faint. Very delicate, very light. Like now is the time for me to reapply. If I were out and about after one hour and 10 minutes, I would probably reapply uh, the perfume. So it's not, a, it's not a longevity beast. You know what I mean? It's, it's okay. But it stays close to the skin. Very intimate, which is also totally fine. You know, totally, totally fine. And Chanel 5 is a bit more ratchet. <laughs> Chanel number 5 on the toilet is a bit more like, it punches you a bit more, even though it's kind of rounded and soft. It's a fresher interpretation of Chanel 5. Samsara is a softer, meadowy, you know, Samsara flow is like this, and Chanel 5 is more like grinding like that right now. So we have like this and that happening. Uh, Debbie also says, skin scent here too. So for Debbie, Samsara is also... Um, very much uh, skin. How do you like my kimono, guys? <laughs> also, um, actually, quick change, quick change, darling. How do you like my kimono, guys? <laughs> that's how quack. That's how quack. That's how quick you can change it up. Now we're even more oriental. Look at all the birds flowing. Mm, very zen right now. <laughs> Debbie's awesome kimono. Come on, nothing really matters. And what? Nothing really matters? Oh, yeah, Madonna, right? <laughs> you know? It, it's so hard to do that dance from the video. Nothing really matters because she's literally, I think it's an editing thing that they did back then. It was like revolutionary, but her kind of moving, you know, all those moves, they have to literally, so what you do is like you do this movement and that's filmed. Okay, cut. Then you do this movement a couple of times, cut. Then you do, you know, several movements. And when you edit them together, you morph them into one another. And it really kind of creates that, robotic movement but in fact she wasn't really dancing the whole scene without interruption you know what i mean a little bit of trickery and sorcery was used to create that effect but one of madonna's best eras uh, ray of light uh hands down in terms of video clips and uh and songs and everything yes anyway nothing really matters that was a good one <laughs> ha 
<laughs> Emil goes like, from femme to mask from mask in a millisecond. Right, Debbie, love the kimono and the color. And Melinda's like, oh, reversible. I know, right? Adidas thought of everything. Ah, ging, 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 ging. Um, Gail is like, love that second kimono. It's the same kimono, Gail. Uh, it looks so comfortable, too. Yeah, it's a boxer's kimono. Ray of light, love. Oh, Gail's favorite song is Ray of light. Oh my gosh, your kimono looks so incredible. I love that Asian design. Thank you, Ken. Um, Ray of Light, my favorite album. It's a good album. It really is. Now, this is a good kimono. I have another kimono. So this is Rita Ora for Adidas, but I have a huge kimono. Like, this is a little bit tighter and smaller, but I have a huge kimono from Jeremy Scott for Adidas in blue and gold, and it's meant to, like, go all the way to the floor, and the sleeves are super long. Like, that one is beyond... This one is actually practical because like it, it ends here. So it's relatively, you know, it's relatively low. Like it's, you could wear it just like that. I mean, just like that. Sure. So guys, what do you think about the Chanel number no. five bottle, which I showed you? I mean, let me put this. Samsara is very Chanel. It's actually more Chanel than Guerlain to me. What do you guys think? Milia says it's not bad to the ball, I guess. Amazed by red. I had no idea, Jen Cat says. Linda says, let's see it. What do you mean, let's see it? Melinda, I showed the photo. Gail, I turned my back. I'm multitasking. I hadn't realized you reversed the kimono. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's the same one. It's just reversible. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. Melinda must possess the red bottle. I don't, and then Colin says, I don't know if this is just now that we all have seen the red bottle, but Chanel 5 smells red to me. <laughs> Um, Chanel 5 Eau de Parfum smells red to me too, if that makes any sense. Oh, Melinda says, let's see the kimono. Oh, okay. Well, what do you want to see? It's like, it's, it's like this, and then it, you know, it goes this far, and then the back of it is quite simple, really. But it's a relatively small kimono. You know what I mean? It's not like one of those, like, you can see here, this is very short. It could be much longer. It could go up to here, but it doesn't. So it's, it's not like the biggest kimono ever. <laughs> Melinda wants to see the long kimono. Yeah, but I have to listen. Yes, you'll see it sooner or later. Actually, um, it's on my Instagram. Like, you got to go way down, like a year and a couple of months ago. Um, I do have some photos wearing it. And I also I think I also made a video with it. Mina says, I like it. Rita Ora has some skills. Ha <laughs> ha, the shade. You know, Rita Ora um, didn't design this on her own. She's very, like, she knows what she wants. But, of course, there was also a design team helping her out. Colin says, that thing is iconic. You mean the red bottle or the kimono? <laughs> I think you mean the red bottle. The red is my color. Uh, I am in... Arius, lol. I like it. Oh, yeah, okay. Fire sign, Melinda. Yes, Debbie, full of fire. <laughs> Amelia's like, of course, Rita didn't design it herself. No, but, but she's quite involved in a lot of the 
parts that that were that were the Adidas collection um, quite involved. Jinkat, Jacob, if you were to design a piece of clothing, what would it be? Oh, I would do the full wardrobe. I wouldn't limit myself to one piece. I would do a jacket. I would do a skirt. I would do pants. I would do a shirt. I'm falling off my sofa here. I would do socks. I would do gloves. I would do a bag. I would do shoes. I would do underwear. I would do necklaces, hats, rings, you know, jewelry. Geez, I mean, I have ideas for everything. Uh, Melinda asked the photo from Khan. No, no, no. Khan was this year. I'm talking a year and a half ago. Collins says, similar deal with the Tom Ford private blend and relationship between perfumes, uh, perfumer T Tom Ford's advice. Who even knows the perfumer uh, for Tom Ford anyway? Yeah, but Colin, but I think that has to do with the fact that Tom Ford has a very strong character. He has this very strong, demanding and commanding presence. So he takes over everything. Like when he arrives to some place, it's all eyes on him. It, it, so if, if it's, if he's creating his own brand and his own perfumes, he's going to make it all about him. And he's going to do it because he knows that if he makes it all about him, it's going to sell more. So it's not just an ego thing. I think it's also, from, from a commercial point of view, it's a strategical choice also to kind of, you know, go in that direction. Make the clothing size inclusive. What do you mean? When I says, ah, Gail, Jacob turned into Bob. What? Emilio Virgo power. Wait, Emilio, you're a Virgo? Oh yeah, you, you are. Because you your birthday was just like now. So like Virgo is from mid-August to mid-September, right? Or like end of August till end of September. Ken asks, what's your favorite Chanel exclusives? It's really hard. It changes on a daily basis. But to me, I separate the exclusives into the four that were there before Jacques Polge. The four meaning Gardenia, number 22, Bois de Zil, uh, and Queer de Russie. Of those four, number 22 is my favorite. And then of the ones that came with Jacques Polge in around 2007, um, I'm I'm definitely torn between Sycamore, 31 Rue Cambon, and then 28 La Pausa and number 18. Those would be my top four. So let's say, I guess, the final battle would be between Sycamore and 31 Rue Cambon. Those would be the top from the Jacques Polge era. Um, but the original four that were there since, that, that were brought back in the 80s, number 22 takes the cake for me. Even though number 22 wasn't an exclusive in the States, number 22 was released regularly, was available everywhere, just like all the other Chanel fragrances. So... If we were to consider the exclusives in America of the three that remain, Gardenia, Queer de Russie, um, and Bois des Îles, uh, Queer de Russie would win of those three. Art Souls is back. How you doing, sweetie? Art Souls is on the lunch break. So, clothing beyond a size 12. Ah, you mean like to make all sizes of clothing, Debbie? Yeah. I would be, I mean, um, I would make all sizes of clothing for sure, definitely. But I think I would also make collections like theme-based. Uh, so there would be a collection that would be only oversized 
and then there would be a collection that would like be only tops, no bottoms, no pun intended, stuff like that, like weird conceptual stuff. Melinda has never tried 31 Rue Cambon. Ooh, you should. It's very, very interesting. Very interesting perfume. Kant says, I mean, Tom Ford fragrances are quite strong, but most of them are very oriental and spicy somehow. I tried a uh, Venetian bergamot once, and I found out that it's a morpher. The thing is, oh, yeah, Emilio says to, <clears throat> I think, to Melinda, just don't try 31 Rue Cambon Eau de Parfum because it's not that good. I have to say, a lot of you, my subscribers and viewers and watching mention Tom Ford perfumes. I'm constantly asked about them. So I think there is this general demand for, for Tom Ford fragrances because a lot of people ask for them, but it's just not me, you know? And I'm really curious as to why this is. Are these perfumes really that good? Or is the aesthetic of them, like how they look like in department stores, is that that's what is very appealing? Or is the promotion of them what is very appealing? Because to me, nothing about them is appealing. Not the bottles, not the aesthetic, not the name behind them. So I, I, there's, I'm missing something. I have the feeling I'm missing something to understand these perfumes more. Emilia says, it's not me either. I don't like them at all. Debbie says, too expensive for my blood. Uh, CSC Love T says, I haven't found a Tom Ford I like. And Melinda says, oh, I do not like Tom Ford perfumes. Okay, so I'm not the only one in the, in the, in the bunker here who's like kind of not really into, into uh, Tom Ford. But I would, I would like to understand it more. You know what I mean? Like I want to know what is it that most people see in these fragrances? Because I really, I, or what most people smell in them. But seeing them because, you know, there's a lot of, the visuals are a big part of loving a perfume. I love the bottles and the packaging of Chanel and how clean and just wonderful they are, you know. That's a huge part of the loving the perfume is also that, uh, unfortunately. But, you know, the eye wants its part as well. Uh, and, and, you know, to kind of fulfill the fantasy. So to me, Tom Ford's packaging and bottles, they just don't do it for me. I'm honest. I, they just don't do it for me. So, Debbie thinks it's just a fad, like Gucci being so popular right now. Cislav says, I find them too masculine. Art Souls tried Black Orchid, but the dry down doesn't agree with him. Emilio says, Black Orchid is fine, but Precious Oud by Van Cleef is much better. Colin says, I think Tom Ford is one of those brands, perfume-wise, that you love at the start of a fragrance journey. As you dig deeper, you like them less and less. That's interesting. Melinda is not a fan of Gucci either. She's mainly just a Dior and Chanel girl, as if that were just, you know. Amelia says some Dior and Chanel are the poop. <laughs> I'm not a fan of blue, Chanel's blue. I'm not a fan of their... Allure, Homme, Flankers, Edition Blanche, Sport, and all that shebang. Really, couldn't care less. I don't like their new formulation of Platinum Egoist. I'm not a fan of Chance, the original Chance. I don't care for it, really. I can't say I'm not a fan. I just don't care for it. But uh, all of the old school ones I love. Yeah.
Gail has heard that Tom Ford Neroli Portofino is a very expensive version of 4711. I will stick to my 4711. Kan says 31 Rucambon is very citrus in the beginning, especially that bergamot. Later on, it turned into this floral patchouli perfection with a buttery iris on top. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Emilio says that Dior has been releasing a lot of crap lately. Yeah, they're if the whole Dior aesthetic at the moment is. I'm not talking about the Maison Dior. I'm talking about their main releases. It's a very tacky aesthetic, very tacky, in the clothing department as well as in the fragrance department. From the bottle shapes to the colors chosen, the color palettes used, the packaging, the commercials, the notes used in the perfumes. It's just very tacky. Tom Ford fragrance was the only perfume I had to scrub off my skin after trying it on for the first time. Ouch. Melinda also doesn't care for the Chanel's that I just mentioned. And Amita says, so Sauvage, Poison Girl, Joy, Tragic. Tragic is gonna be the fourth release. Um, the new Joy from Dior looks like it's from Avon, seriously. <laughs> Who said that? Justified Sins, <laughs> that's a good one. Jennifer Lawrence looked awful on that Joy advertisement. Well, let's talk about how awful the video ad for Gabrielle is. Kirsten Stewart wrapped up in toilet paper running through a field of plastic bottles. No words, really. Melinda loves Belle de Jour. Belle de Jour is amazing. I have it here. Oh, it's really good. It's tiny. It's almost empty. These 40 milliliter bottles are really cute, but I don't know if they're really worth it because like you get addicted and you just got to keep buying them. Uh, yeah, Debbie says, I can't believe they released bath gel and lotion for Gabrielle. Uh, of course they did. It's their major release. Like, they got to keep pushing it, you know, and adding new stuff to it. I'm sure they're also going to release the pure perfume of Gabrielle soon as well. Emilio thinks that Belle de Jour is an overpriced flower bomb. I can't agree with you. I really can't. Nope. Gail says, uh, Kristen Stewart's ad. What the hell did that even mean? <laughs> I, I, I really don't know. It was awful, awful. The worst video ad Chanel has ever made, really. C.S. Lofty says, what's new coming up this fall worth buying? The red bottle of Chanel Number no. 5 Low. That's, I'm going to get that. That's worth buying. I think... Um, I, I don't think there's anything new coming up worth buying that I've heard of. Um, I like hunting down older stuff that's being discontinued for cheaper. <laughs> that's, that, that kind of tickles my fancy more. Debbie says Sicily's coming back. Yeah, but probably totally reformulated. Kant says, I don't understand why they have chosen Kristen Stewart for Gabrielle. I guess because she's so provocative and attention-seeking. I don't think she's attention-seeking, nor do I see her as provocative, nor do I see her fit for Chanel because, like, she looks best when she's just in her, in her ratchet jeans, no makeup, fussy hair, rushing at the airport. Fabulous. But when the Chanel team puts all that smoky eye Louisville stuff on her, 10 tons of gel in her hair to create those weird concoctions on her head and all that clothing with the accessories, they just turn her into a fool. She looks like a baboon. She's a really pretty girl. She just needs to be left alone to be natural. She's a natural beauty. And Chanel is kind of pushing the artificial aspect onto her and it just doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. Awful, just awful. But then again, Karl Lagerfeld, I don't know why he falls in love with these people. Like, Pharrell Williams for Chanel? No. 
no, 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 no. <laughs> like I have no, 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 uh-uh. Kristen Stewart and Pharrell both got to go yesterday, literally. Horrible. <laughs> Emilio says, Kristen represents the perfume perfectly, bland and emotionless. Well, I have to say, I don't mind Gabrielle. I just don't think it's a great Chanel perfume. It's a good perfume, just not a good Chanel perfume. And the dry down, the tuberose in that one is kind of strange. But lately, when I do wear Gabrielle, it lasts forever on me. It doesn't evaporate anymore like it used to in the beginning. I don't know. I don't know what changed. Ooh, Emilia says, Grace Jones for Dior Poison Fatal. That would be amazing. Gabrielle is not bad at all. It's just meh. Art Souls, opinions on Cara de Levine for Chanel. Got to go. Cara Delevingne has got to go. She should try to stick to her failing acting career and just leave Chanel alone. Another one that got to go. Colin says, Jennifer Lawrence looks joyful in the joy ad only because she is emerging from the water in which she was drowning. No, honey. Jennifer looks amazing coming out of the water and joyful because of all the millions they gave her for the ad campaign. Jen Cat, have you ever done a video on Lagerfeld perfume? I really like Moonstar Sun. No, never done a video on Lagerfeld perfumes. Karl Lagerfeld fell in love with Baptiste Jabiconi too. I was so upset that they didn't make a commercial with him for a perfume. I, that, I, that's another failed thing. Jabiconi to me is so bland and this is Italian little macho, you know, that has absolutely no charisma. For some awkward reason, like most Germans do, fall in love with um, Latino looking guys because it's the opposite of them. They don't have blue eyes, they're not blonde, you know. So I see this as a weird infatuation that Lagerfeld has for this kid it's now become a man. But he's so boring. Did you hear Jabiconi's attempt at a music career? Tragic. Melinda, Gabrielle induces headaches for me. Gail, yes, I agree with your comments on uh, Kristen. A natural look suits her. When she talks about Chanel, I never feel she looks comfortable. <laughs> That's true. She never, you know, she always looks so uncomfortable and always like, eh, eh. Oh, Emilio, you're so shady. You're such a shady queen. Jennifer Lawrence has a perfect face for the radio. Wah, 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 wah. Snap. Uh, Debbie, speak all the truths, Jacob. Preach. Rich, 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 rich. All right, we're kicking into one hour, 40 minutes. Let's cut it short here. I have shitloads of stuff to do still, but one last sniff. Samsara is delicious, delicate, not offensive, still has character though. Very, very light, very close to the skin. And Chanel number no. 5 Eau de Toilette is almost gone because it's a reformulated Chanel number no. 5 Eau de Toilette. What can you do? That's what it is. Tomorrow, if I make it on time, I'm working all. Unboxing, live stream of Chanel uh, number no. 19, Eau de Parfum. Uh, comparison to the Eau de Toilette the Pure Perfume, and number 19, Poudre. That's going to be our topic for tomorrow. So dress green, dress to impress. I don't know what I'm going to wear tomorrow. Let's see. I'm probably going to be dead tired. But let's try to make that happen. And I'm going to try to hunt down the Chanel number no. 5 red bottle. If that happens, we might do that video first and then the 19 a day later. I don't know. We'll see. Um, 
what else? Uh, if you wish to help me on Patreon and see the channel grow quicker, you could uh, join Patreon and become a patron there. Super Deca Ball spelled together on Patreon. For those of you, most of you are actually in the chat already. Thank you so who are already patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys, for helping out. Um, you could check that out, and if not, you could, uh, free of any charge, still be here on YouTube. But at least consider subscribing, Super Deco Ball spelled together. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, as Joan Rivers would say. Um, is there anything else to say? Love you all very much. Thumb up this video if you liked it, because, you know, thumbing up uh, gives us joy. Just like Jennifer Lawrence had the joy of emerging from the waters, from the cold waters into the sun. And uh, yeah, Emilia used up his bottle of number 19. Melinda will be wearing number 19 tomorrow, just in case. Debbie, thanks for the live chats. I missed them. Gail says, oh my God, I will have all my babies lined up tomorrow. Uh, Colin says, thank you, Jacob. Good luck finding the red bottle. Thank you, Colin. Amira says, happy late day. You're the best. Thank you, Amira, so much uh, for tuning in again. Um, thank you for the fun, Melly says. I hope we see you tomorrow. I'll try to make it work. Hopefully, internet sticks with us because as of now, nobody's complaining about the stream quality. So I don't know if it's good or bad. I hope it was good enough to warrant following one and a half hour of me blabbering. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for tuning in. Love you so much. Don't ever give up on love. And our love will meet again tomorrow. Love ya. Bye. I'm going to kiss you, and then I'm going to try to end the stream. Because it ain't so easy to end it, you know? It's going to ask me, like, twice, are you sure you want to end the stream? Emilia said it's been great for the past hour. Oh, good. Good. Bye, Emilia. Thank you. Bye, Jin. Bye, Skittles. Bye, Debbie. Bye, Colin. Bye, Melly. Bye, Gail. Uh, and everybody else who I can't see in the chat anymore. Bye, guys.